Right, with the time of year that's in it, let's make a cauldron. Right, on the lathe I have a piece of acacia and it is round about 8.4 right and what I'm going to do is a cauldron shaped bowl and um, with the time of year that it is I figure out why not and uh, I actually quite like doing this and um, what a cauldron shape actually works very well for it as well, as well as a bowl, is uh, hold us for large handles. So the first thing I'm going to do of course is round it off and face off here and I'll put a marcus in it. Right, so I'll just fly through that bit and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, to round it off and I have uh, the markers in it, I have a small foot in it. Now we're we'll starting to get the shape into this. And I'll go into what, in my opinion, is a good shape for a cauldron as I'm doing it. Go across and get into that foot so that I can see where I'm cutting to. And right now, as I said, I want to. Uh, Shape. Right, what I'm basically looking for is a pot bellied bowl with a big lip. I forgot to put the air shield on. Do that now. Right, so the first thing I want to do is get the pot belly into the bottom of this. In order to do that, I want to get the bottom done. Pull cut now to get into that foot. Let's check, I've got that bad wood out of it. Now, see, it's still a little bit just there, so I gotta make it more pot belly, even. Yeah, I got it there. Yep. Still a little bit there. That's quite pinky around that area. So I may have to fill that a little bit, which I'm going to do straight away. Thank you. 
some sawdust in that. A lot of shavings. shape into it first. So I get roughly what I want to do with it. Happy with the rough shape, then I'll worry about getting finished up and stuff on it. Yeah, that's not bad. Right, now we start and get the finishing touch on this. Finish cut just there. I'm not happy with it. I might actually bring that cut, make it a bit curvier, so I can get down below that little problem that's there. fresh edge on this because you can see that curve there does not match that one so I'm going to put a fresh edge on the gouge so we can get it done right and I'm not 100% happy with that curve and if you look there there's some more holes that are coming up in that pumpy area so we get rid of them straight away again I want to bring this in a little bit further I'm 
what I'm going to call them down a bit more. Yes, well, sir. Pump is too much. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to finish cut here. that edge because I want the square edge on it. Yeah, that's better. Right, now I will sand that and I'll be back for the yard for grip it. So, see you in a sec. Alright yeah. I'm keeping with kind of the spooky theme of this week. Things I'll be on a cauldron. This week's yard for grip it is Another Irish vampire legend, right? And it's the legend of Undead Doom, basically the Red Woman, right? Now, a few thousand years ago in Waterford, there lived a beautiful young girl. Her beauty was only matched with the goodness of her heart. Like this was basically the perfect person, right? Everyone knew her and loved her because of the kindness of her heart and her numerous good deeds. deeds sorry. Uh, now, due to the story, nobody actually remembers her real name. Right? They only remember what she became known as, which was Angela Du. Right? The legend says this beautiful young girl fell in love with a young peasant boy in her village. Uh, who had the same kind of pure heart she did. And he was also known for being kind and good. Her father hated this much, as his daughter was of noble blood and could not marry such a lowly man as a farmhand. So he forbade his daughter from seeing this young boy her true love. In order to use his daughter for his own gains, he arranged a marriage to a noble lord who was much older than her, but had lands and money. Now this man was known to be cruel as he was ugly. The peasants who lived on his land feared him and lived day to day in terror of him arriving at their homes. Now the father was happy with this match and paid no attention to his daughter's misery. Her new husband beat her daily, controlled her every move, and took pleasure in causing her as much pain as possible. He was a violent and jealous man who lived only for his own sake. 
and for the pleasures that life could bring him. He was at his happiest when he drew blood from the young girl, and her pale, white, unblemished skin was covered in red. Eventually his controlling ways led him to lock her in a tower away from anyone who could see her or speak to her. Still daily, he went into the tower and beat her savagely. The power he had over was intoxicating to him. And he loved that he had total control over another human being and could do anything his evil little heart desired and no one would stop him. She waited month after month after month to be rescued but after some time she realised it would never come so she decided to take her own life to end her misery. During her final days her pure heart had lost all of its goodness and purity had just gone from her only to be replaced by bitterness and a longing for revenge. After her death, she was buried by the local villagers as her husband had disregarded her body on the side of the road as she was of no more use to him. At the time, it was the normal practice to place stones on top of a newly filled grave, but the villagers knew her for her, heart, for her good, kind heart and didn't keep up with the custom. It was the belief at the time that if you put stones on top of a grave that the person couldn't rise and do harm. But because this young girl was so pure of heart, the villagers didn't believe that she would rise and do harm. So they left the stones off. And that night she clawed her way out of the earth. No longer was she the beautiful kind-hearted young girl. She was now the Derry Do, bent on revenge. First she went to her father's house and tore out his throat, drinking every drop of blood that he spilled. Then on she went to her husband's house where she did the same. With each killing, she began to feel stronger and more alive. Now, rather than resting in peace, she now wanders the land looking for big victims to quench her thirst, particularly men who she believes have wronged a woman. Now, to do this, she sings a beautiful siren's song, which lulls her victim into a deep sleep, so that they are unable to fight back and strike her as her husband did. For centuries in Waterford, Unexplained deaths were blamed on the daddy do, especially for some reason those of children. Now, the legend says her grave is located in Waterford in an area called Strongwell's Tree. Now basically there's this tree in Waterford and it is known as Strongwell's Tree and her grave is beside it. Right. Uh, now according to the legend again, her bloodlust can only be satisfied on the anniversary of the day she died. And on this day, locals go to Strongbow, to Strongbow's tree, they still go. It's like a tradition. And they place stones upon her grave so she cannot rise to kill again. Now, like a lot of the Irish folk tales and legends, this one has a motto. Or a mortal, should I say? Mortal. Where did I get mortal from? But this one has a mortal. And that is that purity of heart can be destroyed by evil. And that if you find someone who is pure of heart, you treat them that way. So, I'll get on with this. And I'll be back when I'm buffing the wax off. So, I'll see you in a sec. I'm just putting the wax off. Uh, I love the colours in this. There's that beautiful gold flash you get with the Malaysian acacia. Both where it's gone kind of uh, punky 
there's a spout after setting in and it um, has put some blacks into it which is really nice beautiful contrast there's that gold flesh from the Malaysian acacia there's even that see-through thing you get with it sometimes just along there and there's the spalted part that has brought the black and dark and everything around it that is really pretty right we flip this over and hollow it out so I'll do that and I'll be back in a sec right then have a flip over the first thing I'm going to do is face it off across Throw the mask back on and uh, get the hollow on this. Now, I will be talking a little bit through this to tell you how to get in that way. We'll just start as normal. Now what I want to do, now that I've got that rim right, what I want to do is I want to hollow below that line. Now that I'm below this line, I can think about going in that way. But to do that, i got to get rid of what's in here first. Now we're going to start to go in, that I'm over that line and I'm checking the width. Just need to get a decent cut around that, around that rim. Yeah, that's better. Now I'm happy with it. And yet again, the whole trick with this is to keep the middle lower than here. Because what you don't want to do is go down in there and catch this wing on wood because it'll just wreck it. Let me get that in there a little bit closer. Now here you could either back hollow or you can push cut. My preference is push cut. But 
the whole thing is don't get greedy. You don't have much control on the tool when it's out here. Take a piece at a time, checking your width. Yeah, it's going in just nicely. Now, as you're doing that, cut the turn around. Turn the gouge as you're going. Keep that bevel in contact. Slightly too thick in there still. Sorry, I bumped the camera. Yeah, that's got it. Now that you've got that difficult bit done, it's just a case of finish off the bottom. But as I said, the whole trick, actually stop this for this, when you're going in there is, you start off your cut as normal, point the bevel away you go, turn it, keep that bevel in contact when you're at the top of this bump, and then as you're going back down, turn it again. Turn it down so that you're coming at it that way. And that'll keep your bevel in contact. If you try and keep it like that, you're gonna, your bevel's gonna lift. And then when you get down to the bottom, it's the up and down motion again, not straight across, up and down. That'll keep your bevel in contact for you. Eating away this. Give the gears another sharpen. Yeah, well, sand. I finished the inside of that, and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, just buffing the wax off, and uh, turned it quite nice inside. The spalt didn't go all the way through, which is a pity. But the dark wood, um, 
around it did where the spalt torn the acacia uh, black or really dark brown anyway uh, did go through so that looks quite nice on the inside so there it is See, that's where the spalt is there the spalt is just a tiny touch of it right in the center of it coming through and it's really nice and the shape of the inside follows the shape of the outside just nicely right I'll take it off and give you a better look at it so be back in a second there we have it an 8x4 cauldron shaped bottle and it's really pretty all the way around but I especially like that spalting at the front and said the inside follows the shape of the outside really nicely I am quite happy with that one. So if you like that video, if you would mind, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one.